Hello everyone, and welcome to this edition of Splash and Go. So after an exciting Daytona 500, the Daytona 500 TV ratings have come in. And one driver suspended indefinitely following Daytona. That and our race winner's picks for Auto Club Speedway. All this and plenty more on this edition of Splash and Go. Community Series driver John Hunter Nemechek will be behind the wheel of the Tricon Garage No. 17 Toyota for at least the next two events at Las Vegas and Atlanta. Also, Kaz Grala will be behind the wheel of the Tricon Garage No. 1 Toyota at Las Vegas. The 200-mile event is set to take place on Friday, March 3rd at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But, at least, at least, He's going to get one race. And it may be more. Now, NASCAR announced the Craftsman Truck Series driver Corey Roper has been suspended indefinitely for violating the substance abuse policy. NASCAR did not disclose exactly what substance it was that was abused, but did in fact suspend him indefinitely. Caden Honeycutt is slated to run the first six races for Roper Racing. Now, in the past, there has been something called the Road to Recovery Program. It's just a recovery program to help members of the NASCAR basically get reinstated following something such as this. In the Xfinity Series, the Car Long Run team, MBM Motorsports, which consists of the number 66 and sometimes the number 13 in the Xfinity Series, has been forced to downsize to only work their flagship number 66 team. If sponsorship does, in fact, become available, they may run their number 13 from time to time. Either J.J. Yaley or Tim, Timmy Hill will probably serve as the driver more times than not, but not every time. Now, Mason Miago will be driving the number, the NBM Motorsports number 66 HMY Yacht Sales Club Ford. This is the 18-year-old Florida native's debut in this series. Now, back in 2022, Yago did run four truck series races, where he didn't have excellent runs, but, I mean, for someone that's just trying to get reps and trying to get laps down, he had, he had honestly, really great runs. He finished all the laps. So, I mean, that's really... You know, what's the first step into getting a first, uh, getting the good finish, finishing the race? And he did that. Now, unfortunately, the number 66 and the number 13 both missed the Xfinity Series race in Daytona. Meaning, an already cash-strapped team starts out in an even deeper hole, not earning any of the purse money from Daytona. Which, ironically, does have the highest purse. Now, NASCAR continues to renovate the North Wilkesboro Speedway ahead of what is going to be one of the most anticipated all-star races in maybe in history. We have not yet had a we have not had a sanctioned NASCAR race on track there since the final cup race back in 1996. This event should both be nostalgic and historical. I cannot wait to see the quality of racing, how it ends up being, and considering we haven't ran there in upwards of 25 years, there's a lot of questions. You know, it could be just, uh, you know, uh, follow the leader, one groove racetrack, or it could be, you know, uh, really difficult, um, let's say, just a really, almost like a slick, pebbly kind of track, where people go in the corner, they push up, and it happens a lot, and, you know, it opens the door for another person, creating a lot of passing. I could see that happening. A lot of people's going straight to, oh, it's going to be just like a, you know, just nose to tail, nose to tail, nose to tail, you know, but I don't, I don't know. It could be, but for real, it very well may not be. We're just going to have to watch and see. Now, at the conclusion of the 2023 Indy 500, Tony Kanaan 
says he thinks he could do it. He could drive for another 10 years physically. But he says it's just time. He's going to go ahead and he's going to hang up the helmet following the 2023 Indy 500. He ran full-time for years and years. Then he shifted down to part-time. Now at the age of 48, he's only getting one-race deals here and there. Kanon says he's thankful to have gotten to do what he loves. Best of luck, Tony. Go get one more victory this May. Thanks for your efforts and all the memories that you've built. Have a wonderful retirement. Now, surprisingly, even though the Daytona 500 was easily the most watched sporting event of the President's Day weekend, the race itself faced some stiff competition. The NBA All-Star Game, Tiger Woods' first PGA Tour event following all of his injuries, yet still with the Daytona 500 averaging a 4.4 rating and 8.17 million viewers on Maine Fox. The race did average the highest share of 15.16, which translates into 15% of homes with a television were tuned into watching this race. That's pretty incredible, if you think about it. Now, now see, considering all the apps and, you know, phones and streaming services and everything, there is less and less people that are watching television nowadays. That means, even if less and less people are watching television as time passes, it means that, altogether, it could still mean that your share goes up. If a lot of people are still watching your show, right? But overall, there's less people watching. Alright? But you still have the same amount of people watching your show. You may not be growing, you may not be shrinking, but your overall share of how many homes would be watching you would be growing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, this weekend, February 25th and 26th, NASCAR will have both the Xfinity Series and the Cup Series on track for what appears to be probably the final race on the two-mile oval configuration at Auto Club. Now... This track has always had awesome racing, several grooves, and it's been a fun, exciting racetrack since its inception back in 1997. Now, the plan is to convert the track into a half-mile short track, only using the current front stretch in the new configuration. They plan to have this done in time for the 2024 season, but if not, they will definitely have it up and going by 2025. Okay, we've given you basically our 2023 Cup Series playoff predictions. But now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start to give you, start back up, giving you our race picks before each race weekend. And see how we do this year. Now see, last year, between all three series, there were just a hair over 100 races run. I shockingly was able to predict the winner of 77 of them. Yeah. Think about that. 106 races ran. I predicted correctly 77 of them. That's easily two thirds. Honestly, it's incredible. And I don't think I, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that again this season. But we're going to see. Now, all right. Without further ado, here's the race winning picks and the weekend preview. Now, the first series. The Xfinity Series is safe to take the green flag at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time under cloudy skies with honestly an almost 100% chance of rain. So we may be looking at a weather delay. For real. The Cup Series is set to take place, take the green flag on Sunday, February 26th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time under mostly cloudy skies. No rain till late evening at this point. But... You know, that's one of those things that is real, real fluid. And we're just going to have to see what happens because we still are a few days out. So, whew, we may be in for a long, wet weekend for real, for real. But nonetheless, Splash and Go keeps you in the know. 
on all the latest NASCAR news, rumors, and results. So be sure to click on that link down in the description. Subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Take care.